If you have watched all our Vector videos so far, you will have noticed that something rather subtle has happened. We began by defining vectors and scalars in terms of things such as weight and mass. But now we have moved away from that idea altogether and we are using vectors without referring to what they mean at all. And you may remember I did say this would happen in an earlier video. But something even more remarkable is now happening. We are using vectors to prove mathematical geometrical theorems. And that's a long way from where we began. But it does show how flexible vectors can be and why it is that mathematicians just love them so much, as I'm sure you will after you've had a bit more practice. So let's begin with a relatively simple geometrical problem. Now here is a square ABCD and the midpoints of BC and CD are M and N respectively. We are given that the vector AD is vector small b and the vector AB is the vector small a. And the question is in four parts. Firstly, what are the vectors MC and CN in terms of A and B? Part B, hence find the vector MN. C, what are the vectors AM and NA in terms of A and B? And finally, part D, find the sum of the vectors AM plus MN plus NA. Now, remember to keep the idea of the high road and the low road in mind at all times. So, here we go. We know that the vector BC is parallel and equal in length to the vector AD, so BC must be vector small b too. Now MC is simply half of this, so MC is a half of vector B. Similarly, vector DC is the same as vector AB, so that must be vector A too. But we need vector CN, which is half of vector DC and is in the opposite direction. So CN must be minus a half of A. Well, that wasn't too difficult, was it? Now, please remember, if you do have trouble with any parts of these proofs, just stop the video and go through the text until you fully understand it. Now for part B. We need vector MN, and this looks suspiciously like a low road. But what's the corresponding high road? Well, we can get from M to N by going from M to C, and then from C to N, and we've just worked out what these vectors are. So vector MN must be vector MC plus vector CN. And that, of course, is half of B plus minus a half of A. And that's equal to half of B minus a half of A, just like in normal algebra, remember. And that's a half of B minus A. We've just factorised that expression. And now in part C, we first need to find the vector AM, but this is simply vector AB plus vector BM, which I'm sure you can easily see by now must be A plus a half of B. Similarly, vector NA is vector ND plus vector DA. And a moment's thought will tell you that this must be minus a half A minus B. And lastly, in part D, we need to find the value of vector AM plus vector MN plus vector NA. And as it happens, we now know what all these individual vectors are. So all we need to do is to add them up. AM plus MN plus NA is A plus a half B plus a half B minus a half A minus a half A minus B. And using simple algebra, all the vector A's cancel and all the vector B's cancel too, leaving us with zero, which in vector speak is of course the null vector. Now, this isn't such a strange result as you might think, 
because vector AM plus vector MN plus vector NA simply means start at the point A and go in a triangle until you end up back where you started at point A. So the low road must be go nowhere. And we know by now that that is the null or zero vector. Well, make sure you understand all the parts of this problem before you move on to the next one, which is a little more difficult.